So they still have seven cards in hand. They got an additional card than what I have. All right. We're able to level up action, which means now the Devoted Council online. Good just for healing my Nexus. All right, so we're going to predict, then draw one. We're going to take Howling Abyss. And I'm going to replace that thing with the Howling Abyss. And welcome, everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Action Abyss, our next viewer submitted donation deck. Uh, this is going to be playing Action and Braum with the Howling Abyss, trying to combine the Howling Abyss with Siphoning Strike, granting your champions everywhere plus two plus two, and then the Howling Abyss creating a whole lot of level two champions for us. Um, that's what that's what we're going to try to do. We're going to have Devoted Council, three copies in here, which is... You know, pretty interesting because all we do have to level a champion for this, and uh, that may not be the easiest thing to do, leveling a champion with action or brom. But action's not too difficult to level. As far as I know, I don't believe that devoted council works with howling abyss. Like if you just play a level two champion from howling abyss, that doesn't count as like leveling up a champion. Like that's a process that devoted council doesn't check. You know, just so um, I don't think that that will work. Uh, but let's let's see if we can level up action. That's probably going to be our easiest one to level up, I suppose. Um, but you know, like I said, this is a viewer submitted list. We got three copies of Devoted Council in here. Uh, we got our Merciless Hunters. Um, you know, different different mount or different kinds of landmarks. Um, and with Ride of the Arcane to be able to destroy a landmark to deal four to an enemy unit. We'll have three copies of Spirit Fire. I don't know. This there's like some things that you know don't look fantastic on paper, but maybe they play better you know like while we actually play the games um because it looks like we only kind of have like roiling sands as like our, and i guess preservarium as like our only landmarks to destroy uh <laughs> you know that that's not very many landmarks to destroy because obviously we're not going to destroy the howling abyss and i don't think we want to destroy the warlord's palace because we need to level up action so i don't know anyway let's just give it a try <laughs> let's just you know who knows how it will work out let's try it out here we go we'll go play our five games in ranked the meme tier decks don't always work out. Like, we just played Thresh Poppy. It didn't really work out. Um, but the Thresh Poppy deck was close, and I think Thresh and Poppy work really well together, but just the, the list that we had just didn't quite uh, work out enough. Okay, I'm going to mulligan the Devoted Council. Let's keep Howling Abyss and Treasure Seeker. We're going to be seeking lots of treasure. Poppy does seem like what everybody's playing right now. We only played against... Uh, for the the last... Those other five games, we only played against one deck that wasn't Poppy, and that was Lulu Zed, which is basically a Poppy deck. Otherwise, all... Four of the other ones were, you know, either Lulu Poppy or Fizz Poppy. Okay, we'll get a Waking Sands in here. I wouldn't mind, like, Siphoning Strike with the Waking Sands. And that's what I'm going to do. I know we do have Spirit Fire that can kill that, but I, I want to get that plus two, plus two for the champions while I can. Steady now. And they were probably planning on playing other multi-region units after that. I honestly wasn't expecting them to block. I was thinking I could get 
I was thinking I could sneak two points of damage in. Yeah, Bandle City Mayor is incredible. That's that's the one card that our Thresh Poppy deck did not have was Bandle City Mayor, and all of our opponents had Bandle City Mayor, and that's why we lost. That card is incredible. I've got your back. I'll take it, that's fine. I'm gonna save the spell mana for Spirit Fire. I want to play Howling Abyss right now. I'm sorry, Warlord's Palace. This is just like so awkward, <laughs> all this put together. Yep. So, so I was. Really considering destroying Mana Gem, but considering we have like the Spirit Fire, then I was thinking we probably couldn't just destroy Mana Gem. Definitely see like a rally effect happening. I don't know, this was a difficult game to play. I, I love that trade. Let's trade Rally for Waking Sands. I'm, I'm very happy with that. So I can only play two units out. I can't play three. I can only play two. One mana short. I'm staying alive. Am I? No, actually, no. We can stay alive. If they don't, if they have nothing, we can stay alive. I was thinking that we probably need the quicksand as well. No, yeah, I figured they had something. All right, so I liked what our deck had going on. I, I think that I probably made some incorrect decisions in that game. I'm guessing if we could go back and replay that. That was a tough game to play. You think Poppy's the best four drop champion? It's probably just the best champion, right? Spearfire is just too expensive. Like, this is what Sharima is missing. Spearfire is just too expensive. Um, I mean, we could try a three mana 1 6, but I just. I don't, doesn't sound that appealing playing a three mana 1 6, but. I don't know, I guess we'll try it.
yes, Mama. It's the beast, Mama. I do not break rules. I bend them slightly. Yeah, there's. We do have Rider their cane with no landmarks. So that's doesn't make life easy. I should make a speech. Where's my speech? Pops in your hat. I put it in your hat this morning. Quick hands make quick work. So I only played the one drop so we could save three spell mana. Quest will be over quicker and you can fry a ferret. Thing is, is if like if I pass, they probably pass, right? At least that's what I'd do if I were them. I'd waste all this mana. Mm, the world won't save itself, you know, Brom. Yeah, just play Brom. Looking for an anvil. So the spear of fire does just hit the spell shield for these things. Getting close to this Warlord's Palace, leveling up to help out our devoted council. We're getting close. So Spearfire right now would just kill three things and take out two spell shields. And then it would just give them the opportunity to like continually go wide. I don't want to meet whatever woke you up. So maybe I should have taken that other Braum. For the cha for Brahms champion spell. Alright, so they're making sure that the Bandle City Mayor can stay alive. At least that's what they were trying to do. Again, it doesn't... The spell shield on these owl cats is really nice. I could see them getting rid of the spell shield on the owl cat. It's a free card anyway. Getting free two, free one mana two ones is pretty nice. The spell shield is a little overkill. Do they need our So they still have seven cards in hand, they got an additional card than what I have. Alright! We're able to level up action, which means now the Devoted Council online. Good just for healing my Nexus. Alright, so we're going to predict, then draw one. 
We're going to take Howling Abyss. And I'm going to replace that thing with the Howling Abyss. I think we still need want like all of our different blockers and stuff. Which maybe I should have destroyed the landmark with this Rye of the Arcane first. Before replacing it. That probably would have been that probably would have been a good thing to do. There is still time to surrender. Just say, oh please don't kill me, Upshun. All right, cool. We got the win. How about that? One and two. We got a win today. One step closer to a world without villain. All right, got a win. Whoa, it's not Lulu or Poppy. Game number eight, the first time we're not playing against Lulu or Poppy in a deck. Game number eight. Ezreal Sejuani. Assuming they're going to be a little slower, and that we can keep Abyss and Golden Ambassador. All right, we can still curve two, three, four. Now Merciless Hunter dies to Mystic Shot. You are regular life force. Right of the Arcane killing an Ezreal could be really important if, like, they have an Ezreal. Like, if they go like Ezreal next round, that could be pretty important. But yeah, I kind of want to take the Brom also. We can always rely on you to keep us safe. I want Brom to go along with this Brom and have like Champion Spell Brom. Arda's gonna make a meal of them. This is obviously gonna be Mystic Shot on the Merciless Hunter. Yeah. Their Mystic Shot only costs one mana. Time for a true display of skill. Where's my Rite of the, Rite of the Arcane? Should have taken that. So this has gone very poorly for me. So perfect hand for the opponent. Perfect setup for this deck. The Ballistic Bot leveling up the Sejuani for them. Can you improve perfection? See what I've looked over your best. Yeah, this truly is a perfect setup for them. I'm glad we got the quicksand. I'm not sure how I'm dealing with Sejuani. I didn't play the action here, keeping the spell mana so I could have three spell mana for quicksand and then six mana for Howling Abyss. So we have both of those this round. Kind of looks like you're missing. They grow up so fast. All right, fair enough. So how do we ever kill a Sejuani? Like a leveled up Sejuani? Mushrooms could I seal this 
my sword. This is fun, yes? Awesome. Getting Ballistic Bot out of here, really important because of all the just the free damage. And free spells, like just all that. That was very important. So they still have this Ezreal. Sounds dangerous. I'm in. So still be zero power. They're doing that to level up Ezreal, but Ezreal will still be zero power. We got minus two. I can play Rock Hopper or Action, but I'm not sure if I want to. I guess. So next round we'll have nine mana. If I want Siphoning Strike plus, you know, like a Zier or something, that's gonna Siphoning Strike's gonna be five. Yeah, I think we can go Rock Hopper. I'd just rather have this Roiling Sands than the Warlord's Palace at this point. So they do have another Ballistic Bot or Peddler or anything like that. Lux. I'm worried about playing something, then they play Sejuani. Seriously? The only card they could have. They already used Harsh Winds this round. They'd already played Flash Freeze twice. That's their third Flash Freeze. Uh, yeah, it's the third Flash Freeze. Yeah, that's game. My opponents just have everything today. Just absolutely everything. That's just how, that's what today has been. Next time, we will do better. Darkness control. Alright, hopefully a little bit slower hand. And we can get set up. Um, but we... I don't know, I guess maybe we need to, have to kill that, keep that right of the arcane. We just have like some awkwardness in here. Action's good, Howling Abyss good. And the thing is, like, we you kind of have to play the Ride of the Arcane. And that removal spell hasn't been bad for us. Like, it's, it's been necessary and you have to play it. But I kind of wish I wish we had more landmarks to sacrifice for that. Um, Devoted Council just isn't... This is not a Devoted Council deck because it's so difficult to level up both Action and, um, and Braum. It's so hard to level them up. I don't need rules to know good from bad. Villains beware. Especially since we're kind of using this <laughs> this Warlord's Palace as our landmark for the Ride of the Arcane. We can open attack. I could play like some Waking Sands before attacking. Kind of want to do that. Just play some more five twos. Put pressure on them. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, there is there's the three mana card that makes two Roiling Sands and then draws a card. Um, that would be an option quick hands make quick work. to play instead, yes, but I think I like Preservarium more than that card. Like just spending two mana instead of three mana. Double Vile Feast. It's a good life. You know, again, force them to have something pretty nice, We, which is what we did. So the Vile Feast and those Treasure Seekers just traded for each other. I spent three mana on my Treasure Seekers um, with the Waking Sands as well, and they only spent two mana on theirs. But overall, as far as cards go, they just trade. This is pretty disappointing. My only way of killing that is destroying this Warlord's Palace. That's like almost count, almost has been counted down. That's disappointing. There's not a better play. I'm not going to destroy a mana gem whenever I want to play Howling Abyss next round. They get a darkness each round with that thing. Rub it on. Rub it who? And now that darkness costs less mana. Let us get going. Yeah, not a good not a good champion. Not a good level two champion. That one is a good champion. Honor is the rest on a dull blade. So this does mean that then darkness kills the Brom. No, we definitely can't Siphoning Strike first because of Vengeance. Considering, you know, playing like Waking Sands, Rock Hopper, that kind of stuff first. Only I can command darkness. Only I. That would be something we could do. Hey, we can get darkness now. Yeah, I just have to be careful for Siphoning Strike. Doing four damage or something? They just have that. They just have that many gohards in their hand. One ghost down. Thousands to go. The hurt 
See, I guess this could create, you know, create another go hard, which would be devastating. Go pack your bags fast speed. Cause of the center. Don't have any warning shots. I guess that's a thing. Definitely feels like they're setting up for packer bags. All right, so I'm kind of doing this in case of mini morph. Stress defense. That was the card that was created. That extra copy. I think stress defense is just really good. You said it seems really good and really bad. I don't think it's really bad at all. I think it's just really good. The flexibility, being able to use it on your units and your opponent's units all the time. The flexibility is, is very nice to have. So I do have the opportunity to siphoning strike right now. But we're only kill killing this thing and not killing, you know, like a Vagar or a Senna. Where, like, we may have to kill a Vega or a Senna later, but then we may not be able to either. I guess we do it while we can. Awesome! Okay, well, that got him to surrender. How about that? Just infinite level 2 champions. You know, get a new one every single round. There we go. Wow, another deck... That's not Lulu and not Poppy. Kindred Swain. That should be a pretty removal heavy attack. Rock Hopper being a 3 1 seems like it's going to die super easily. We'll go ahead and send it back. There are 75 champions in the game now, so there is a, a very, very large, wide variety of champions that you're getting with the Howling Abyss. But considering they're level 2 champions, it's it's pretty hard to have a poor champion. There are some, like we saw like the Tristana, but still even that's like a 3-mana 2-4 quick attack. That's nothing to like, you know, be like, wow, this is amazing or anything like that, but that's, you know, it could be worse. When you're just, when it's just a free created card every round. You can get the same champions in the same game, yes. However, you, it has to be not in hand, deck, or play. So you, you can, like, we play a pike, they kill the pike, and so the pike's gone, then we could create another pike. That can happen. I turn it like so. But it, that's the only way for it to happen. Well, I did say I wanted to see the world. The world? Man, I play Treasure Seeker. Treasure Seeker gets Vile Feasted, then they have 
The Sentinel turned into a 3-3. You can help by not getting cooling striped to start with. I actually did that one time a while, you know, this is a long time ago, of course, but playing Howling Abyss, we did that with a really in soul in like a, a long Targon mirror, like where we created a really in soul. Well, I mean, I wasn't playing Targon, but I, I got it, made a really in soul with the Howling Abyss. And my opponent, you know, like got rid of the spell shield and then used like one of the Targon's obliteration cards and obliterated a really in soul. And then we created a new Aurelian Soul. <laughs> and that was awesome. And we got them with the second Aurelian Soul. And I don't think they were very happy about it. In a super long game. We can always rely on you to keep us safe. When they run, wrap them up tight. The Sentinel card's an MVP in your Senna Swain deck. Yeah, one mana, three, three, fearsome. The Fearsome in particular. You know, this is like Chip, but they just gave it Fearsome. I think they give Fearsome a little too easily. What a jerk. We just want to do cool stuff with Howling Abyss. That's the meanest play in the entire game, is destroying Howling Abyss with Scorched Earth. So mean. Sands beneath me and winds behind me. Bask in the sunlight. Woohoo! It can be undone. What so our friends did do? They have like Ravenous Flock, like they're gonna kill the Braum either way. Just making it so Vile Feast and Unspeakable Horror, those cards that you know we've seen a lot of, those don't kill the Golden Ambassador for this challenge. We're still left with us both basically having the same board. I guess we have a better board. And we have more cards in hand. Those are two good things. Got it. Wanna find another Howling Abyss, please? I haven't seen too much Thrush in that Nasus, but we did play against it once yesterday, and it defeated us yesterday. And it looked it looked pretty good yesterday. I think about playing the Spirit Fire this round it does let me play the action as well. I guess I could have played Southern Treasure Seeker first and seen what they did. We got it yeah, many morph is good against Nasus. I haven't seen, I, I haven't played against that much many morph, but there is, you know, many morphs in the format. Another golden ambassador. 
Fear the power you do not see. at 7 out of 12. So we got them down to 8. So spend a lot of resources basically just to do damage. Not really do anything else right there. Should have played it last round, we would have hit with the Hunter. This round we missed. That better be Howling Abyss on top. I think we're just going to take the pass. No. Gonna find a gift for an Ecton, right, Arda? I'm worried about them like playing Leviathan, though, right? Like, And they just passed there. and I don't know. That's what I was worried about. Everything's going good. I'm doing good. The dogs are doing good. Yeah. Got the call from the vet yesterday about Harvey, and while Harvey does... Alright, sweet, it is the Howling Abyss. While Harvey does have a couple of cysts on her, basically just like... I don't know, uh, things of fat. Little balls of fat, like on like one on her leg and stuff. They're not cancerous, so that's really good. And uh, she should be okay. Alright, well, let's go ahead and send him on in. <laughs> We'll go over here. Yeah, so all good news. I thought, like, Death's Hand kills Ambassador or Merciless Hunter, which is why I'm not having the Swain challenge either of those two, because of Death's Hand. Maybe we should cast Spear of Fire right there. No! Oh man, this went so bad. So not only did our Golden Ambassador miss, but at least it missed for Howling Abyss, but they were holding on to Scorched Earth waiting for that Howling Abyss. Alright, so I guess I, I really should have cast Spirit Fire right there. I could have saved two units, and there's the Death's Hand. And now we are just kind of stuck. No, it takes two today. We actually did play it yesterday. Last night we played It Takes Two for around three hours. Yes, this is ranked. Um, but yeah, so that was a lot of fun. So you can, you can find the video here, on, like the replay. Um, and uh, we're going to play more It Takes Two next Friday. So every, hopefully every Friday, but next Friday is going to be the next time that we're going to be playing variety game, myself and Boot. And it will be at 7 p.m. Eastern, which is five hours from right now, depending on your time zone. Keep counting down, Palace. Keep counting down. Save six life and got a lizard and a shovel. I guess we get to block. That's not so bad. No, I would have rather killed that. <laughs> the 
the third Scorched Earth. Yeah, Merciless Hunter became a 4-2 just earlier in the week, actually, like on Wednesday. They had an emergency balance patch, and that was one of them. My opponent's just in here drawing all champions. Gosh, Devoted Council is so worthless. We got to the late game and they top decked a whole lot better than we did. Good game. I needed that Golden Ambassador not to miss. Like the one Freljord card we drew in all of that was the, the one Howling Abyss. Needed it not to miss. All right, so we saw like some, some cool things. Howling Abyss did actually look like a good finisher. Um, you know, of course, it got Scorched Earth a whole lot against the one deck, but it did look like a good quality finisher. And Ride of the Arcane was really a necessary card. Like, the Shrima, Shrima just doesn't have any way to kill anything else. So, like, the Ride of the Arcane was actually pretty necessary. Um, but Spirit Fire did look pretty expensive, but not too bad. It, really, the, the one card that was useless was the Devoted Council. Um, and even Action... Action's kind of useless as well, to be honest. I mean, it's a 2-2 quick attack, I guess. But, like, the Warlord's Palace, like, yeah, it's really hard for that Warlord's Palace to count down. But it did happen a couple of times, I guess. But we're never, ever going to have a Warlord's Horde countdown, right? Like, that's just not even possible. So, like, play, I think the reason to play Action is to, you know, have this thing grant your champions everywhere a spell shield plus 2 plus 2. But that is just actually impossible to happen in this deck without... Like, you need a lot more things to target your own units to... To turbo those up. I could see just playing a different champion. Um, I'm not exactly sure which champion. Trundle's always good in these kind of decks, uh, just being a big body and regeneration and stuff, but I don't know if if you want how if you want the golden ambassador, you'll want very many Freljord cards. We only had the two Freljord cards. Um, but uh, yeah, Trundle or um, could play Zillion and make time bombs. That's always kind of that's always fun to do, and then like your time bombs will help out. I could definitely see playing Zillion instead of Action. That's an option. But, uh, uh, yeah, you know, those are there's some things. But, yeah, Devoted Council needs to change. That needs to turn into a useful card. As far as Shreema goes, what is, like, the most useful card in Shreema? Could see just playing a third Rock Opera, third Preservarium, especially third Preservarium. But if we're trying to keep it where it's only uh, just Shreema... I wonder, maybe a Servitude of Desolation. Yeah. All right, let's get a Preservarium, a Servitude of Desolation, and then, like, a Ride Negation. The thing is, that card's supposed to be anti-aggro. We did just kind of face a whole lot of control and not really any aggro. Maybe you just play Endless Devouts. If you want to keep it, like, kind of the same, if you want, like, just, like, the blocker. Because Endless Devout, you know, blocks a lot better and trades a lot better than the Devoted Council. And then you get that Sarcophagus... And the sarcoph sarcophagus is something for you to blow up with the ride of the arcane. So just doing that would would uh, definitely help out if you just want to switch three drops. All right, but anyway, that's gonna be it here for Action Abyss. So those y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there, and feel free to leave those comments about Howling Abyss deck. Um, you know, if you got any other suggestions on on improving the deck, feel free to let us know because I love playing Howling Abyss decks. That's for sure. But that's gonna be it for this video. So as always. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next one.